Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about our main spark timing table and our spark timing modifier tables we'll be working with in our Fuel Tech Manager software. So when we jump into our spark timing table, we're gonna find that we have two different modes that we can view our spark timing in, a basic or an advanced mode. The basic mode is gonna be a two-dimensional table, which is probably something we don't wanna work with, and then we can put it into advanced mode, which is gonna be a three-dimensional table, which is pretty standard for any kind of standalone. We'll find one axis is gonna be based on load, and the other axis is gonna be based on engine RPM, and the values in the table are gonna be expressed in degrees before top dead center. I'm gonna be showing you some general editing techniques for the spark timing table, as well as going in and creating a base spark timing table that's going to be safe to begin your tuning process with for any kind of engine. We'll also take a look at our other timing compensation or modifier tables such as intake air and engine coolant temperature and how they're going to be working together in conjunction with the main spark timing table. We're going to have a lot to cover so let's jump into this video so we can check it out. Okay so let's get started here. We're going to be taking a look at our spark timing and our spark timing modifier tables in our fuel tech software. So we're gonna find here, I have my main spark timing table open right now. We can see here, it's gonna be the map times RPM ignition table. It's set on advanced. Now we can see it's a three dimensional table based on engine load and engine RPM. We'll find that when you generate the base map, it's gonna to try to put your spark timing table in the basic mode or a two dimensional view of this table. We don't wanna work with a two dimensional view. We wanna be a lot more specific with our spark timing. We'll find that the two dimensional is gonna be very, very basic and we're definitely not gonna to wanna to use it. So in order to convert it to this advanced, we cover this in a previous training video. We're gonna make sure we go into our advanced map options. We're gonna move down here to our ignition tables or ignition maps, I should say go here and make sure that we have it on table, not line. When we select table, that's gonna put it into the three-dimensional view, and we're gonna have 32 breakpoints to edit or work with here on our load, and 32 on our engine RPM. So the table can be expanded out to a very massive table. Generally speaking, we probably don't need that much resolution, but we have the ability to expand it out that far. Now, working with the values in the table, We'll find if we have a value here, um, looking through our table, of 29 degrees. We'll find that we're going to be firing off our spark plug, or commanding it to fire off, 29 degrees before top dead center on our compression stroke. Now it's going to be initiating our spark and trying to build cylinder pressure to build torque and power out of the engine. Now as we go up in load, we can see here if we're ascending up in our load, you can see we're in vacuum right here and ascending upwards, we're going to be reducing our spark timing. Now, how much we need to reduce our spark timing is going to be depending on the octane of fuel we're using and the dynamic compression of the engine. So we've covered spark timing, how to tune spark timing pretty extensively in EFI Basics and EFI Advanced. So if you're jumping into this video right now and you're following along and you're confused about anything, definitely jump into those courses. They give you a very good starting point, a lot of detailed explanations of actually how to work with spark timing and what it means and what we're gonna be referencing when we're doing our tuning. Now, looking at the table here again, if we have a value here of zero degrees, we're gonna be firing our spark plug at top dead center between our compression and our power 